Welcome aboard, fellow travelers. In this video, we're taking our frequent travel pals, Mike and Vicky, on their first grand tour of Europe, starting with the vibrant heart of the UK, London. Our home base, none other than the historic Waldorf Hotel, where old world charm meets modern luxury. Oh, and wait until you hear about the cocktails just around the corner at One Aldwych. First up, it's time for a classic London walking tour. We'll dive into history at the Tower of London, where we get to see quite a collection of armor, as well as various torture devices. You can really see why nobody was thrilled when they were sent to the tower. I predict bad dreams tonight. <laughs> Next, we cross the iconic Tower Bridge and stroll past the giant London Eye Ferris wheel along the Thames to the Houses of Parliament, where the clock tower is still under construction. Of course, no visit to London is complete without saying hello to the monarch. Well, their house at least, Buckingham Palace. And for a bit of urban chaos, Piccadilly Circus should do the trick. After all that walking, it's time for a bit of culture, London West End style. We snag last minute tickets at the Leicester Square booth for none other than the Book of Mormon. We all found out just how irreverent a play can be, genuinely one of the funniest things any of us had ever seen. And what better way to wrap up an evening in London than cocktails at One Aldwych. Their mixologists are practically magicians creating liquid art that's almost too pretty to drink almost. We challenged them with a key lime martini. They apologized for not having graham crocker rim liner, but they gave us one of the best cocktails any of us had ever enjoyed. Other London restaurants we really enjoyed while there were Christopher's, right across the street from the Lyceum Theatre and just around the corner from the Waldorf, and Roca Aldwych, just down the street from the hotel. London's incredible, but today we're taking a detour to Haverhill, a small town with big meaning for Vicky. She was born there while her dad was in the service, and she's got a photo that we're determined to match with the real location. With a little help from the town historian, we found the spot, just as picturesque as ever. And in a plot twist, we discovered later that we could have found it on Google Street View. Ah, technology. Next, we hop on the Eurostar high-speed train to Paris. Arriving at the splendid Hotel Splendide Etoile, with the Arc de Triomphe just a stone's throw away. Paris is all about the art, the food, and the sights. And we're about to do it all. We get our fill of masterpieces at the Louvre, Musée d'Orsay, and L'Orangerie. It's a lot of iconic art to see in one day. Mike even got reprimanded by the docent at L'Orangerie for looking too closely at Monet's water lilies. An amazing display over two oval rooms. Then it's all aboard for an open-air double-decker bus for a Parisian sightseeing tour from the Eiffel Tower to the Latin Quarter. Before the tragic fire, we were fortunate enough to visit the Notre Dame Cathedral, a breathtaking experience we'll never forget. Afternoons in Paris are best spent sipping something in an outdoor cafe, perhaps at the Marais, followed by a leisurely stroll down the Champs-Élysées. We even got to enjoy some two Michelin star dining at L'Atelier de Joël Rubichon. Perfect. In a city of world-famous restaurants, one of our can't-miss smaller places is Le Hide. Don't let the tiny size fool you. The food is always outstanding. The Michelin folks really miss this one, and that's a win for all of us diners who know about it. From Paris, we speed down to Bézier on the TGV, where our next adventure awaits. We learned that the trains passing only a few feet away were quite startling to Vicky and Kathy. With a relative closing speed of over 400 miles an hour, it's quite a jolt, and their reaction never got old. We're staying at the vineyard in Languedoc, just in time for the World Wine Tasting Championships. Mike and Vicky discovered just how passionate the French are about their wine. After getting our fill of wine snobs, it was time to move on. Next up is Cinque Terre, but getting there from Béziers, let's just say it's a bit of a journey. We went from Béziers to Nîmes, changed trains to go to Marseille, where we caught a train to Nice, where we get a train to Genoa to catch a train to Levante, and then finally a train to Cinque Terre and our picture-perfect village of Rio Maggiore. Five train changes later, we finally arrived. After that marathon, our stay at the Cruetza de Ma four-room hotel with private decks and hot tub overlooking the ocean felt like paradise. We explored Vernazza, Manarola, and of course Rio Maggiore itself. Each village was more charming than the last. We have a separate video on our wanderings here, and we'll leave a link to it in the description below if you want to see more about this magical place. Finally, we're off to Venice, the floating city where romance meets history. Here our base is the five-star Luna Hotel Baglioni, right next to St. Mark's Square, with its own private water taxi dock. We dive straight into exploring the most famous sites. 
The Doge's Palace was home to the leader of this city-state and included the halls where government business was conducted, diplomatic missions were held, and where criminals were tried and sent to prison across the famous Bridge of Sighs. St. Mark's Cathedral is next to the palace and is known for its Gothic Byzantine style. However, videos aren't allowed inside to show the golden interior. A walk to the iconic Rialto Bridge is a worthwhile diversion passing over multiple canals and past many shops selling keepsakes from this city. Gondola ride? Check. It sounds so touristy, but any visit would seem incomplete without the experience. It was interesting to learn how these boats were family-run businesses with each boat customized by the oarsmen and their family. But here's the thing about Venice. While its beauty is undeniable, the crowds and commercialization can be a bit overwhelming. At times, it feels more like a luxury shopping mall than a historical treasure. To escape the crowds, we took a water taxi to Murano, perhaps the world's most famous glassblowing destination, where the Doge moved all the glassblowing in 1291 due to the repeated outbreaks of fires from all the furnaces. We then had lunch in Burano, known for lace making. We can't help but wonder whether the Doges moved the production to the island in 1614 due to a series of needle incidents in Venice. Be advised, both glass and lace products are very pricey, so expect some significant sticker shock. As an added bonus, you can even see the Leaning Tower of Burano. Finally, from our hotel's dock, we get a water taxi straight to the airport. As we lift it off, the Dolomites bid us farewell, capping off an unforgettable journey. Mike and Vicky's first European adventure was a whirlwind, filled with history, art, wine, and a few travel hiccups along the way. But that's what makes it an adventure, right? Now, we're already planning our next trip across the pond. And for us, well, we're just getting started. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe to be alerted to future videos. If you have suggestions for people of places you've enjoyed along the way, please leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.